Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I wanted to take and show everyone how I edit my videos in KineMaster. Now, this is not a sponsored video from KineMaster or anything else like that. This is just the simple editing system that I use to edit all of my YouTube videos. So this is going under some YouTube help for all the smaller creators out there that are trying to take and be able to edit your videos down faster. <coughs> now, I'm going to go over to the, some of the key features, and this is what we'll do. So as you can see here, here's all my past videos I have edited, and there is a lot of them on there. And there's a bunch on there, and they've been re-upped, and I've deleted a whole bunch off that list. But to start a new project, you'll simply use this. By the way, KineMaster has a free option, but they put a watermark of KineMaster across all your videos. If you want it, the fully unlocked version, I believe the current price is $40 a year. It might be $45 a year, and you can find them on the Google Play Store. As far as I know, they work with both iOS and Android. So let's begin. So you start by hitting this, and you can have a project assistant help you through your first one, or you can hit an empty project. I always go to empty project. Now that's going to bring up essentially your timeline screen. And this is what I take and do. So the timeline screen here for KineMaster, you got a little gear icon down here, and this is just like your settings window. You guys can adjust audio presets video fade in and fade out durations uh, and then you're like your clip you're editing you know how uh, your individual clips or photos are perceived when you got everything the way you like it you always just hit the check bo box to confirm and that's always up here so <coughs> if you excuse me kinda cold in the shop today so we're gonna go to adding media and I go into my camera. Now I'm just gonna pick a random thing on my camera and we're gonna kinda make a real quick video out of this. Well, this is the wrong type thing. This is a video that I shot earlier and this is gonna be the simplest way for me to take and show you my various clips and how I take and do this. I'll go back to an earlier camera like this and I'll find something that I've done in the past. Uh, let's see here. <coughs> Let's find something easy here to do. We're going to go with, ah, oh, sure, why not? We're going to go with this one, this one, and this one. Huh? So we'll go with that. I'm going to go back, and I make sure, let me hit this return arrow, <coughs> this takes me to the front of my video. Now, I have already previously made an intro. They keep everything in a nice folder for you. So I add in my intro, and then I go to the back end of the footage, and I add just a simple black background so I can do my end screens later on. And hit the check mark when you're done. So now I start processing my video from the rear of the footage or the end of the footage back forward. So I come up here, and you can touch these little areas like this. And you can add transition points. So you can have no transition, soft white transition, motion cuts, 3D transitions. I always go with classic. And I do a crossfade transition. And it'll preview that for you, how that works over here. So when you're happy with the transition effect, you hit the check mark. And then you go to the next slide. And I add all my transitions next. So I'll do another crossfade, the check mark, come all the way up over here, touch it, I'll do a crossfade again, and I just continue finding the clip that I need. As you can tell, this was a long one. None of these clips actually matter together. <coughs> In fact, you guys have probably already seen this. This was me talking about my safety stuff, so it has nothing to do with the last other two clips other than to take and be a placeholder. So now I can go all the way up to the front and hit classic transitions and I do a simple zoom out from my intro. Voila! So if you've timed your video right, so we'll hit check mark, you should get something that looks like this.
Hello everybody, welcome back to the... Okay, see how there was too long of a pause there? So now, since I said hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop, I'll touch it, and I can trim to the left of the playhead, which is this little red line, or I trim to the right of the playhead. I'll do left of the playhead, and it'll get rid of that dead air space. I hit my check mark, and then I watch it. <coughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to give you Just a like that. Talk of so now you can see how that works. Now I'll go all the way to the end of my video clips. So now I'm working back forwards through everything. I'll find where my next transition is, and I will make sure that where I shut it off, and where it begins again is a good starting and stop point. On the next one. Okay, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. So I just want to take it. So there you go. Not so bad. Now, a little secret here. I preset all my transition clips. If I touch my transition clip, you can see it's about two seconds. I allow a two second pause at the end of my video clip and a two second pause before the beginning of my next video clip when I'm filming in order that it lines up with this because it takes about a second into this one and a second into that one and so therefore all I gotta do is put in this one transition and it eliminates that dead air space that you get where maybe you see the guy grab the camera and shake it because he like hit the end button and stuff and so by having this set at a two second pause I can get rid of the trim to the right and to the left. In fact, I can up this to a three second pause and now watch how it'll cut, cut me off, okay? And I will catch you on the next one. See how that's better? Okay, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. So, I so there's less touch. of a pause that way. You can just adjust this in your actual editing there. And then, you know, you can just go down. If I want to add... See, there was another transition. Didn't even get to see it there. Hit play. There you go. And now at this point, I would normally voice over on a quiet video like this. So this is doing a time lapse, which I do right with the camera, the in, the in camera software on the cell phone, the LG V20. Now there are some affiliate links I'll be putting in the description for the camera gear that I use on a daily basis. That's this phone here and you know the different stuff that I use to hold it. Those do go to help support the channel. I do make a small little commission for sending you those people's way or to that particular website. So just so you're aware of that, full disclosure. All right. So then at the end, you know, once again, if I was talking, I would say thank you all for watching, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one. And then I fade out to black, and I allow about 10 seconds <coughs> for my end screens to pop up. Now this doesn't have to be just a black screen. This could be pictures, this could be anything. Uh, this could be really anything, it could be a logo, it could be whatever you wanna put up here for your end screens. But after I'm all said and done, and I like everything, like it exactly the way it is. I'll hit my back arrow button and I will go add a title to it and then go ahead and render the video. Now one of the things that you can do is let's say I wanted to take and point out something, put text on here. I can add a layer and I can choose to add handwriting, text. So it's, let's, let's go with handwriting, eh? We'll go with handwriting. I'm going to do green, and I'm just going to, you know, I'm adding an arrow there. See? I can add arrows to it. I could change that arrow. I could just do like a regular pencil line or something. I could give myself circles or squigglies. You can write on the screen or whatever. It's kind of a neat thing. I don't really use it that much. Uh, you can erase stuff. You can erase the things that you've written. You can watch how I erase all that. Um, you know, you can do you can do a lot of different stuff with this editing software, which is great. If I can get that to attach, 
and that just deletes the whole everything that I put on there. But you know, I can say I'm pointing to this and I can tap the pencil icon and I can give a highlight there and I can have that come up on the screen so I can hit the check mark. And so now before that's there, watch. Off on that side of the shop. There it is. About just, you know, a so like I said, they have some pretty neat options. You can dig into it as deep as you want. Usually I don't do too many flourishments. I just do the basic edits. I do add sizes of materials and stuff on screen through the text function. And then I just go that route. When I'm done with this, you'll see it'll say untitled. I just tap it once. I go to tap the title. And then I can add the title. Right? I just put test vid. Okay, hit OK. And then the last but not least, all you have to do is render the video. You can just hit the hit this right here. This is the share button slash whatever icon, but you attach it, and then it says save video to gallery. And you choose what definition you want this to be saved at. It can be full high definition. It can be qual. It can be 4K, full high definition 1080p, standard 720p, uh, a standard definition of 540, or you can go as low quality as 360p. So that's how you save it first. So you save it and render it like that. We'll put it in low low quality. And it'll show you, you know, the estimated time to remaining. It takes about five minutes, or so it says right now, that it'll take to edit and render this in just like a standard 360p quality. But there you have it. That's a little bit of how I edit my videos. Let me know if that's very helpful to you or not. Uh, put that in the comment section down below. I hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And like I always say, God bless you and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.